Welcome to Mafre Stadium. Shouldn't uh, he push the button? No, he doesn't. He's not Aaron Portsline. He's, he's just, he's, he's our senior, he's a senior soccer writer, senior but soccer. he is not, work, he's not should, earned that you yet. Push you, you're it's probably coming. longer arms than I do. It's coming. Anyway, yeah. uh, Tom Reed, along with columnist Michael A. Race, and our crew, fine crew beat writer Andrew Erickson. Gentlemen, we've just witnessed a shocking 2-1 crew defeat, a game which they seem to have well in hand into the 80th minute. Of course, fans are tired of hearing shades of last season, but really... That's what I wrote. <laughs> it, it really was a game where they had so much in control. I, the Toronto had very little offense going, save for a penalty kick at the end of the first half, uh, which Zach Steffen dealt with expertly, uh, stopping Jose out the door. Uh, the crew had taken a lead on a penalty kick. Uh, I believe it was... Iguain yes, with the PK, 28th, yeah. 28th minute, uh, one that was earned by Ola Kamara on a nice through ball from Will Trapp, right? right. And that one nothing lead held up for a long point of the game. But I think, Andrew, part of your game story is going to be the, the, the chance the crew had opportunities to make it 2 nothing, did they not? Right, exactly. And, and, you know, talking to guys after the game, they said it was particularly disappointing because they played to the game plan, they had the lead, they had control of the game, they had possession, they had a save on a penalty kick. And they had the best team in the league on the ropes for more than 80 minutes, and you can't put that away. So all those things in your favor to still not get the win or even a point, I think, is particularly frustrating for them. Toronto comes in here having won four consecutive games. They had to play out west, correct? They played in Seattle. Seattle. Seattle yeah. come here. They don't have Giovinco. Right. And, again, everything seemed to be going well. And, Mike, for you, this, this had to look a lot like some of the games that you and I covered last well, year. Well, it did. I pointed that out. But, you know, I wasn't as uh, – I don't think they imploded in this game. Yeah. You know, to me, this was, uh, all right, here's the best team in the East. And they showed them a little lesson. Because, <laughs> you know, they never, as well as the crew played, and as much as Toronto was at bay, um, Toronto never soiled their shorts. Yeah. And, you know, Michael Bradley is a maestro. And they, they, Toronto was good when they had to be. Uh, to me, that was a... I, I wasn't, if I was a crew fan, I wouldn't be all that angry about this loss. Angry is the word, or frustrated. Right. They got taught a lesson. Uh, they end up getting beat on two, pl two uh, play, two crosses, one from each side. Uh, since you are our, our analyst, our, our soccer writer, you're going to pronounce the first name of Mr. Ricketts, who scored Hussein. both goals. Hussein Ricketts, yeah. uh, both goals. The first goal, I thought. The, Defensively, they got caught too narrow. They were all kind of compact. They let a ball go out wide right. It crosses in, and, and this was a game where there was no uh, Nico Ness. Right. They started two guys. Uh, I think in your tweet, combined six foot or twelve foot seven. Right. Right. <laughs> with with Pernally and uh, Jonathan Mensa. Yep. And yet uh, the first ball comes in. It's a high ball. Ricketts puts it in. Kind of beats Pernally to the ball. That's the first goal. The second ball was one of these. I watched this replay like six times. Uh, cross again. Was it Vasquez that gets the touch? Yeah, I got the touch that kind of set up. The right in front yeah. of Cornelli. And the next thing you know, it's like it's like synchronized guys going like this, <laughs> reaching for the ball. They can't get it. Ricketts puts it in. Tom, you're gesticulating yourself right out of the screen. Right? I, I am. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's early for us here doing this. We'll be doing this a lot more openly this season. How does this team now pick itself up? And uh, they have not lost two games in a row yet. Is that correct? They have. Once? Uh, they came, they lost at New York, and then came back and lost to New York City FC. Okay. How does this team, what do these guys have to do on a very short rest? They come back and play this right. weekend in Montreal. It's You know, it's May 10th. Yeah. <laughs> it's May 10th. It's not like July 31st when, you know, they last of like five successive draws, four of them at home. All of them blown, you know. Um, and, and they're four one and one when they have a lead in the second half. I don't know if they won four games they had a lead in the second half all last year. Uh, well, they must have because they, they, they didn't win. Games. They didn't win their fifth game last year until late August. So I didn't see choking ducks. I didn't see choking ducks. I mean, Cornelli had a tough night. He's he's a rookie. Yeah, first um, one really. I mean, he's played really well. That's what Ricketts does to you. He comes off. He's Vinny Johnson. He comes <laughs> off the bench and scores. You know, all right. Uh, so go ahead. That's, uh, I, I wasn't disappointing. Loss, no question about it. End of the world. Can't even see it. Right. Can't even see it on the horizon. 
I thought one guy that played better tonight you know, from, from, from a positive standpoint that they like to see was Muhammad Abu. I thought he this might have been his best game. Right, and you know, you, you put it in the context of against the New York Red Bulls, you have Archer in there for you know all of 35 seconds. He breaks his wrist. This guy comes off the bench cold and really has a, a rough 45 minutes, had a rough game the next game, and ultimately lost his job for the next game after that to Nico Ness. Um, but you're right, looked a little bit more efficient, looked a little bit more sure of himself. Um, and no big point. mistakes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There was no turnover that led to a goal. Now, what is the... Yeah, that. yeah there's no, he didn't have that. Right. Give us a status from what you know as, as far as our tour. Uh, could, could we possibly see him against Montreal this weekend? I think there's a chance. And the, inis- the initial post-surgery estimate was that he would miss this homestand. Um, he returned to full practice yesterday. Uh, so it's looking like he's running. It's just a matter of getting used to the cast and you know, being sure if there's contact that there's going to be no re-injury there. So... Uh, three games and you know potentially Saturday, but I, I don't know that for sure. All right, well we'll, we'll see you uh, at some point again here, hopefully very soon out here at Moffat Stadium. Also uh, on Thursday we're, we're going into the studios be, tomorrow yeah, yeah. for the uh, uh, soccer speakeasy that Andrew will be running. Well, Thursday, Mike will be May, May, May 11th. All right, uh, but for now that's for it. From not from us tonight. Two one final. Uh, Tough loss for the crew. Uh, We'll see you next time. Andrew, you go ahead and push the button on the way out. Oh, you're going to let him push the button?